Okay, evening friends. I'm Dr. Sushant. I'm from Ames Delhi, and I'm your pathology faculty in Dr. Bhatia Institute. Today we are discussing the November Ames, the November Ames 2017 path questions. November Ames 2017 path questions. There were 17 questions from pathology. Pretty easy. They were not very tough. I will not say ki out of 17, say 5 were tough. No. Out of 17, 2, 3 were tough. Rest 14 were moderate ones. So, these moderate 14 questions are the ones which actually get you a rank. So, what I basically want to say is that out of these 17 questions, when you are attempting as a student, you should be targeting at least 12 to 15 of these. The 12 is the basic minimum, 15 is a extremely good number, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. So, starting with the questions, starting with the first question, I will write the question for you also because unfortunately, I am not able to project my PPT. <coughs> so, I will have to write the question. The first question that came was for, electro, for electrolyte study, for electrolyte study the blood sample that is collected, the blood sample it is taken in your options were lithium heparin, lithium heparin, sodium fluoride, sodium citrate and EDTA and EDTA, these were your options and the answer is of course, lithium heparin, nothing much to be told in this. Lithium in and heparin, it is used for electrolytes, it is used for electrolytes, LFTs, KFTs and stuff. This is where we use lithium heparin for. EDTA, all of you know it from your internship days, it is the one that is used for CBC complete blood count, HB, A1C and retic count, EDTA, CBC, HB, A1C and retic count. Sodium citrate is the one used for all the coagulation tests that is PT, PTTK and ESR, PT, PTK and ESR. For this we use sodium citrate whereas sodium fluoride is for glucose estimation it is for glucose estimation. Pretty easy. We have seen this, see you knew about sodium fluoride, sodium citrate and EDTA. So, the only one that was left was lithium heparin, which was the answer by default. Next. Next question was an image based question. Unfortunately, again I cannot show you the image. It was an image based question with options as schwannoma, with one of the options being schwannoma and this was the right answer. Now, schwannoma, uh, let us see one or two points with respect to theory with this. This is the repeat question. Microscopically, microscopically, schwannoma, it has two areas, antony A and antony B area. Microscopically, it has two areas, antony A and antony B. First point, antony A are the hypercellular areas, antony A are the hypercellular areas whereas antony B are the hypocellular areas, antony B is the hypocellular area. Next point, schwannoma it is also associated with the presence of veruque bodies and what are viruke bodies? Viruke bodies, they are small eosinophilic structures with nuclear palisading. I am very sure all of you would have seen a pic of schwannoma. This is a repeat question from Ames last year. It has eosinophilic structure with nuclear palisading which is present on the side. This is a schwannoma. Next, this gets us to the next question that is it was on tumor lysis syndrome. This gets us to the next one. Tumor lysis syndrome does not include 
tumor lysis syndrome does not include and your options were hypercalcemia, hypercalcemia, hyperkalemia, hyperuricemia and hyperphosphatemia. And the answer is A that is hypercalcemia. First point, first point tumor lysis syndrome, what is it? It is because of destruction of large number of rapidly proliferating neoplastic cells. What is tumor lysis syndrome? It occurs because of destruction of because of destruction of large number of neoplastic cells, destruction of a large number of neoplastic cells. First point, so it is usually seen, next point, it is usually seen in treatment of ALL that is acute lymphoblastic leukemia and buckets, it is seen with treatment of ALL and buckets. Next point, it is associated with hypocalcemia, it is not hyper, it is hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia and acidosis and acidosis. This is tumor lysis syndrome. Next, this gets us to the next question that was on blood banking. This gets us to the next one that is blood is stored for 35 days in which preservative and the answer is CPDA that is citrate phosphate dextrose adenine. CPDA that is citrate phosphate citrate phosphate dextrose adenine it is stored for 35 days in CPDA citrate phosphate dextrose adenine let us have a look at shelf life of other preservatives so, let us make a master table for shelf life of other preservatives starting with ACD, starting with ACD that is acidified citrate dextrose, ACD that is acidified citrate dextrose, it has a shelf life of 21 days. Next is CPD that is citrate phosphate dextrose, CPD that is citrate phosphate dextrose which has a shelf life of 28 days, easy to remember the shelf lives they are in multiples of 7, 7 3s are 21, 7 4s are 28, 7 5s are 35 that is CPDA citrate phosphate dextrose adenine and the last is SAGM, sodium adenine glucose mannitol, SAGM that is sodium adenine glucose mannitol, SAGM which has a half life of 42 days. So, the half lives are in multiples of 7, this is the shelf lives of various preservatives. Next, next, the next question that was asked was on SLL CLL, the cell of origin. <coughs> the next question was SLL CLL arises from SLL CLL arises from and the right answer is marginal zone B cells, it arises from 
marginal zone B cells. Now, suppose if this option, this is your first choice, this is the best answer. Before I go further, for the juniors who are seeing this, SLL is small lymphocytic lymphoma slash chronic lymphocytic leukemia. We will see 2-3 points about these after the question is over. But for the senior batch, SLL, CLL, the best answer, it arises from marginal zone B cells. If this option is not given, then the second best option, then the second best option after this is the NAVE B cell. So, SLL, CLL arises from marginal zone B cells followed by NAVE B cells. Next, next. Before I go to the next one, let us just have a look at what is SLL, CLL. Small lymphocytic lymphoma, that is the lymphoma, it is localized to the lymph node, slash chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. That means that these malignant lymph node cells, they have infiltrated into the bone marrow. SLL, CLL, this is a B cell CLPD. That means it is a B cell chronic lymphoproliferative disorder, which is the pan B cell marker CD19. So, this is CD19 positive. Another extremely important question that is asked again from CLL is it is also CD5 positive, CD23 positive has been asked repeatedly. Markers in CLL 19 positive, 5 positive, 23 positive. Next point, microscopy. Microscopically, <coughs> microscopically, the name tells you chronic lymphocytic lymphoma slash small lymphocytic lymphoma. Peripheral smear shows the presence of mature appearing lymphocytes. It shows the presence of mature appearing lymphocytes. When I say mature appearing lymphocytes, will they be small in size or will they be large in size as compared to an RBC? They are similar in size to an RBC. They are mature appearing lymphocytes. Differentiated from ALL, that is acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which shows the presence of blasts. What were blasts? They were very large cells. They were about two and a half to three times the size of an RBC. Two and a half to three times the size of an RBC. That is ALL. So coming back to this, SLL, CLL arises from marginal zone B cells and NAV B cell. Next point. This gets us to the next question. This gets us to the next one. Patient with chloroma. Patient with chloroma. Which investigation is to be ordered? Chloroma. It is the presence of acute leukemia in a in a extra medullary site. So, which investigation would be ordered? And the answer is peripheral blood smear. Which investigation? Peripheral blood smear. This was the best possible answer among from all the options that were given. Peripheral blood smear. Next point. Chloromas, they are most commonly seen. Let us have a look at one more point with this. I am not going into the FAB classification of AML. FAB stands for the seniors. You know it very well. FAB is French, American, British. FAB classification of AML. It divides AML from M0 to M7. Numerous questions come from this. At this point, I am not interested in it. What I am interested in is just one point in this. Chloromas are most commonly associated with M2. They are most commonly associated with M2. Before I go further, I am not going to write it, but let us just have a recap of the answers. Best prognostic AML, which FAB type? M3. Best prognosis? M3. M3 stands for acute promyelocytic leukemia. Let me write it for you. Best prognosis. We will just see 3 4 points with respect to this. Best prognostic AML M3 that is 
acute promyelocytic leukemia next point most common translocation in m3 the most common translocation seen in m3 is translocation 15 17 fusion transcript pml rara the more number of times you speak the more you will remember and this is important fusion transcript pml rara next point next point why is it best prognosis because it has therapy against it and the therapy for m3 is atra all trans retinoic acid next point most common cause of death in m3 dic most common cause of death in m3 dic that is disseminated intravascular coagulation so i can reframe this as dic is most common with m3 dic is most common with m3 next next this gets us to the next one <coughs> fixative for pap smear so this gets us to fixatives and the question that was asked was fixative for pap smear the fixative that we use for pap smear is 95% ethyl alcohol fixative for pap smear 95% ethyl alcohol next so let us make a list of fixatives here only which is the most commonly used fixative in pathology or in histopath the most commonly used is formaldehyde kitna percent formaldehyde 10 percent formaldehyde most commonly used 10 percent formaldehyde next electron microscopy for electron microscopy we use glutaraldehyde electron microscopy glutaraldehyde next gi biopsies gi biopsies boins solution gi biopsy boins solution next boin is b o u i n boins solution next testicular biopsy testicular biopsy boin holland solution testicular biopsy boin holland solution so pap smear is 95% ethyl alcohol formaldehyde to aldehyde boin solution boin holland solution easy to remember if you do a testicular biopsy the person is howling in pain so boin holland solution last is bone marrow biopsy let me write it on top only bone marrow biopsy zenkers fluid bone marrow biopsy zenkers fluid done this is the list of fixatives that i used in pathology next the next question that was asked was on life cycle it is it was an image based question the image was exactly from google and the examiner had asked you the life cycle of hepatitis b virus unfortunately i do not have the image with me but it is a set image you can have a look at it from my page in facebook the life cycle of hepatitis b virus was asked next in the same question even hiv was the one which was in the options so you should also know the life cycle of hiv this again is important life cycle of hiv in the life cycle of hiv the virus it has GP one twenty. This GP one twenty binds to CD four of the T cells. Let me draw it as this is the cell. This is the cell. Virus has an outer layer of GP one twenty, which binds with CD four. This GP one twenty CD four binding leads to a conformational change. it leads to a conformation change as a result of which it this binds to ccr5 
This GP120 CD4 complex binds to CCR5. This in turn leads to penetration by GP141. GP41. Let me rub off the cell part. This in turn leads to GP41 penetration. GP41 penetration. So, first was GP120 followed by GP41. This in turn then uh, as you very well know HIV this is a RNA virus. So, this in turn leads to reverse transcription RNA reverse transcriptase activity DNA which then integrates and then lead to replication. This is integration of provirus into host genome this is integrated with host genome in turn leading to replication in turn leading to replication this is the life cycle of HIV this again can very well be asked the image in the paper was that of a life cycle of hepatitis B virus next next there was a coming to the next image based question there were three main options which I have in the recall thing. The first option was RHT, all these are the microscopic images. You can look at the images in my book or at my Facebook page or whatever. My name is Sushant Soni. So, have a look at the images from the Facebook page or from my book. RHT, RHT shows the RHT ash of body and this I guess was what was asked RHD ash of body next asteroid body oh, the next option was sarcoidosis next option was sarcoidosis which shows the presence of asteroid bodies which shows asteroid bodies I can draw asteroid body for you asteroid the name tells you just asteroids so basically these are stellate shaped inclusions stellate matlab star shaped these are stellate shaped inclusions in giant cells these are stellate inclusions in giant cells asteroid bodies so what an asteroid body will look like would be a giant cell it shows the presence of a giant cell with multiple nuclei with presence of a stellate inclusion that is with presence of a star shaped inclusion this is an asteroid body this is an asteroid body next the third option in this so the first was RHT the second was sarcoidosis third option was TB which you very well know is associated with granulomas and I am pretty sure you are able to microscopically identify a granuloma. Next, next this gets us to the next question this was a theory question from hematology. This gets us to the next one that is when tissue thromboplastin and calcium is added. when tissue thromboplastin and calcium is added which pathway is getting activated it is associated with the activation of extrinsic pathway it is associated with the activation of extrinsic pathway when tissue thromboplastin and calcium is added and this is how we detect PT that is prothrombin time. This is a start factual question from hematology. Next, the next question was which of the following is not involved in iron metabolism? Not involved in iron metabolism and the options that were given were transthyretin, transthyretin, hepcidin, ceruloplasmin, 
hepcidin, ceruloplasmin, and ferroportin. And ferroportin. I guess there's a lot of confusion in the options. Some said hepcidin was given, some said transferrin was given, whatever. But the point to be noted here is the answer is transthyretin. The answer is transthyretin. So this gets us to the role of ceruloplasmin. What the study says when the levels of ceruloplasmin, hepcidin and ferroportin, I am very sure you know the role of hepcidin and ferroportin in iron metabolism. Ceruloplasmin is a new one. When the levels fall below 1 percent, when the levels of ceruloplasmin fall below 1 percent, the cell to plasma iron flow is impaired. It is associated with impaired cell to plasma iron flow. This statement is again important. This can be the next question that is asked in all India or AIMS or whatever, the role of ceruloplasmin. It is associated with impaired cell to plasma iron flow. So, it, even though total body iron is normal, total body iron is normal, but it is associated with hypopheremia. Hypopheremia matlab reduced serum iron. It is associated with reduced serum iron that is hypopheremia despite normal total body iron. This is when this is because of impaired cell to plasma iron flow. Next, next, this again gets us to the next hematology question. In iron deficiency anemia, all are increased. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, let me rephrase this. In iron deficiency anemia, all are reduced. All are reduced except NIDA. All are reduced except you very well know that serum iron reduces, transferrin saturation reduces, serum ferritin reduces, bone marrow iron reduces. What does not reduce is TIBC, total iron binding capacity. TIBC increases, TIBC increases in iron deficiency anemia. It increases in IDA. It is not reduced. It increases. Next, this gets us again to the next microscopy question from hematology. That is, three images were given. The first image showed you the presence of target cells. The second image showed you the presence of hovel jolly bodies target cells, hovel jolly bodies and the last one showed RBCs with pallor, RBCs with pallor. Some students are also saying that in the last image there was even the presence of teardrop RBCs, there was the presence of teardrop RBCs. So, three images were shown showing you these three different things. So, the question that was asked was thalassemia shows which all features out of these and the answer is all of the above. Thalassemia is associated with the presence of target cells, hovel jolly bodies and teardrop RBCs or RBCs with central pallor. This gets us to the last pathology based question that is ovarian tumor. AFP is normal, LDH is elevated. This gets us to the last one that is ovarian tumor. AFP is normal, LDH is elevated. AFP is normal, LDH is elevated. Diagnosis there were four options dysgenoma, yolk sac tumor, yolk sac tumor, AFP is elevated, mixed germ cell tumor, teratoma, and the answer was dysgenoma answer was dysgenoma. In dysgenoma, LDH is increased, AFP is normal. You very well know it is the most common immature germ cell ovarian tumor. It is the most common immature germ cell 
ovarian tumor this you very well know most common germ cell tumor of the ovary teratoma most common immature germ cell tumor of the ovary dysgeminoma you again know this is the female counterpart of seminoma it is the female counterpart of seminoma coming to the important point it expresses dysgeminoma it expresses three markers oct3 oct4 and nanog these three points are important it expresses oct3 oct4 and nanog this needs to be remembered dysgeminoma expresses oct3 oct4 nanog last point it is also plap positive it is plap positive plap is placental alkaline phosphatase plap stands for placental alkaline phosphatase it is plap positive this is dysgeminoma done so this takes care of your aims questions that were asked in this 2017 aims paper and in case you have any query or any question that i have missed or absolutely anything that you want to ask discuss counterpoint whatsoever you can simply mail it to me at sushantesuni at gmail.com you can mail it to me at sushantesuni at gmail.com but give me two three days to reply that is it that is it thank you and bestest of luck for the all india paper thank you take care